All right, what's up guys? Today is the day. Right now, you are going to learn how to use every single panel in Lightroom, in the develop module, in order to get consistent, professional results okay i'm gonna tell you all of the little known like kind of secrets about the panels that i use and take you through my process of editing a photo and how i save my presets uh, after i'm done with an edit so that you know how to make presets that look good across a variety of images uh also, if you do stick around through this tutorial, it is gonna be very extensive. So, you know, make sure you're serious about this. But if you make it to the end, I do have like, you know, a special little treat for the perseverers, okay? Uh, and I also have my own presets that I make. So if you wanna support or if you wanna just save yourself time and don't even watch this video or don't even <laughs> make your own presets or just get them so that you can learn uh, and speed up your edits. Cause like pretty much every professional photographer I know uses presets. It just saves you a lot of time that you need to spend on getting better at shooting and like figuring out how to make more money and stuff like that uh so you know you can get my presets link will be in the description um but yeah let's get into this let's learn about lightroom all right guys so we are here in lightroom okay what i want to do for you today is end the frustration okay because I know, especially if you're new to Lightroom, you come in here, you see all these panels, you don't know what half these sliders do, you don't know what order you should be editing in, you're turning stuff on and off to see if you like it or if it's even making the difference that you thought it was gonna make. And it's really frustrating to struggle, okay? <laughs> so what you wanna do is you wanna understand how all of the develop panels work so that you can be really intentional with your art form. You want to be able to know how to use the tools so that you can get your intended result, all right? So that's what I'm gonna show you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through an edit, right? And I'm gonna explain to you what order I do things in. You don't have to do them in exactly the right order, but by doing them in a similar order, which you'll understand why, you know, given the explanations I'll be doing, uh, you'll be able to get uh, consistent results and faster results, getting your image to where you want it to be so that you spend less time editing. Uh, and then I'll show you how I save presets so that you know uh, what things you should and shouldn't save into your preset so that it looks good on a variety of images from a variety of cameras and a variety of lighting situations, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, so let's get into it. First thing, is how you expose your images, right? Before you even edit, let's talk about how I expose my images uh, because that informs everything that you're going to do. I tend to expose a little bit to the right and then recover the highlights in post, right? Uh, now you wanna be careful with this because on digital cameras, if you clip your highlights like I did here, they are gone forever. Like I'm not gonna be able to bring that part of the sky back. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. But I like to do that just because uh, you don't wanna have to boost uh, the shadow parts of your images too much because the noise can kind of get messy on some cameras. So that's why I, I expose that way. Um, and so when you're editing, right, you wanna first make sure that you adjust your exposure and also your white balance. Now, these are the first things that I do because these greatly affect the overall look of your image. The exposure is the exposure, you know, and the white balance uh, is gonna affect your entire image and how cool or warm it is. So in this situation, I think my exposure was actually pretty good, but I just wanna warm my white balance up just a tad because I shot this at sunset, so I know it was a pretty warm looking scene. Uh, so, you know, just a slight adjustment to my white balance. You can see the before and the after, you know, just warms it up a little bit uh, and we are good. 
Now, that's something that I wouldn't save into a preset, and we'll talk about that later, but you know, that's something specific to my image, uh, you know, how I exposed it, or you know, I think I use auto white balance, so my white balance was like a little bit off because the camera picked it, um, but that will vary from image to image, so you don't need to save that in a preset if you are worried about that. Now, what I don't do is just continue to just go straight down all of the panels, right? Now, this is something that uh, I used to do back in the day when I first started. I'm sure like, uh, you know, a lot of you guys have done this because this is just how Lightroom presents things to you, right? So you just go in order. But what you actually want to do is you want to make changes to the things that are going to affect your overall image first. So you want to make changes to in the panels and the sliders that are going to affect how your entire image looks. And then as you edit, you get more and more detailed. So exposure, as you can see, changes the entire image. That's why you want to do that first. Same thing with white balance, okay? Now the next part that changes your entire image is something that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, this is like a little known uh, panel. A lot of people just don't even touch it because they don't know what it does. Uh, and this is the camera calibration section. So I'm going to break that down for you uh, and explain what all of this means uh, and how you use it. First thing that you see here is process. This is just how Lightroom is processing the image. I always leave this on whatever the newest version is. Um, I don't know why you'd want to use an older version, but you can. Uh, you know, if you were used to an older version of Lightroom or something, you can do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I just tend to leave it how it is. Now, let's talk about what the calibration section even does, right? You see these sliders for these different hues, right? And you think, oh, that's uh, kind of similar to HSL, right? I bet it does the same thing. Well, let's see. If I take this blue, right, primary, and I just take the hue over, okay, well, I made my blue more teal, but my skin looks terrible. Why is this happening? Okay, so let me explain this to you. The camera calibration will affect every single pixel in your image, okay? Every single one. What your camera sensor has is millions and millions of pixels. And each pixel in your image is a combination of red, green, and blue values that make up the entire color of that individual pixel. Now you can see that if you look at your histogram and you start scrolling over or mousing over certain parts of your image, right? You can see there's a specific red, green, and blue value here on this part of the brick wall. But if I go over to her glasses, I have a different red, green, and blue value in my histogram. So what camera calibration does is it adjusts the balance of the reds, green and blue uh, in each and every single pixel. That's why when you adjust the hue of, let's say, the blue, you end up adjusting the oranges, which are the skin tones, because those are complementary colors. So if you put that balance off of how the blue is represented, it's going to represent how that pixel uh, you know, is overall being represented, and that can have a negative effect on things like skin tone. So, why would you ever want to use this, right? <laughs> you guys are probably like, okay, so no one ever uses this. this is, you say this is the second thing that you do. When would you will actually want to use this? Because it just seems like it's just going to break my image, right? So, the first place where you would want to use this, right, is to match cameras or just change how, you know, your camera chose to interpret the scene. And what I mean by that is every camera manufacturer and even like different models of cameras within the same manufacturer have their own 
color science. You might have heard this term thrown around before, and all that means is how they interpret the real life colors, right? So they all interpret red, greens, and blues a little bit differently. So if you wanted to make your Canon image look more like a Nikon image or a Sony image look more like a Fuji image, you could do a lot of that and get really close by adjusting these red, green, and blue primaries, okay? However, in a preset, I generally don't like to do that unless I'm making a preset, you know, that's camera specific for making a specific camera look a specific way. However, you can get a lot done by adjusting the saturation slider. So when I'm editing stuff like portraits, again, I tend not to really touch the hues too much. I only mess with the saturation and I'll show you what that can do for you. If I take the saturation of the blue primer, you see my image starts to pop a whole lot more. So that's before, that's after. I just got way more pop. Okay, let's just use calibration before, after, that makes a huge difference. Just by boosting the saturation of this blue primary, I get so much more pop out of my image. Now you can get big effects also by adjusting the greens, right? So I might wanna take this green just a little bit down uh, and I might wanna take the reds up a bit. So just by making those adjustments to the saturation levels of red, green, and blue in each pixel, I can get my image to pop a whole lot more. And as you can see, that's doing a lot. It's doing like really good. But again, I'm not really messing with shifting any of the colors because you know that can get a bit messy. So. You can see now already my overall image is looking pretty good and that had a huge effect all over my image. Now after I'm done with this, uh, you know, I'll sometimes go over to my lens corrections and my transforms and like make adjustments if I wanted to like straighten the image or if I wanted to make lens corrections. I tend not to actually use this too much, like either of these. Um, you know, if I'm doing like a landscape or something and I need to level the horizon or like, you know, I'm shooting a building, then, you know, sometimes I'll use this, but I'm not gonna cover this too in depth. I think most of you guys know how to use it, but if you want uh, something more in depth on this, uh, I can do that. You know, you could just like hit one of these buttons and it'll level your photo. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you can do it manually also, or like have it adjust everything, not just the leveling, also like the slight angle that you might have in your photo and all of that. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna use that this time. And lens profile corrections, uh, if you use vintage lenses, a lot of times there isn't gonna be a profile. Uh, you can make all of these adjustments manually though, if you wanna try and adjust your uh, lens profiles but for me I tend to let my lens be my lens but if you wanted to you know use a profile correction because your lens has heavy vignetting or distortion you would do that next okay and if you do lens correction sometimes you will have to adjust your exposure afterwards because sometimes it will brighten uh, your image up a little bit uh, so that's just something to keep in mind uh, but yeah those you don't really need to worry too much about because if you're using a lens profile, you just pick your lens and it just works. If you just hit the level button, it'll just level your picture, it just works. There's not really too much to those panels, but you know they do have a big effect on your overall image, so you wanna make sure you do those early on in your edit. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna adjust is the tone curve. So the tone curve uh, is really powerful. What it is, is you can see this representation of your entire image, much like the histogram. This line represents your shadows all the way up to the highlights and everything in between. What you can do is take your shadow levels and increase them 
or your highlights and decrease them or adjust any of the mid-tone areas to make them brighter or darker as you see fit. Now, most people are generally familiar with that, but what you also want to get hip to is using the individual red, green, and blue channels on the tone curve. What this allows you to do is add reds, greens, or blues uh, into the highlights, midtones, or shadows. The way that I tend to do this is just a simple S curve on all of them to create more contrast, but you can get creative with it. You just have to understand how it works. So if you see here, I'm pulling out red out of the shadows that's making them look more green, and then I'm adding red into the highlights okay making them you know obviously look more red and i'm gonna go through and do a similar type of curve for the red the greens and the blues okay so all three i'm gonna adjust in a similar way and show you guys kind of what effect that has i'm trying not to be too heavy-handed with it uh, you know, because it can start to look wild if you take it too far. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go back to our general tone curve, and you can see before, after, before, after, and that was with the tone curve, and this is the complete before and after on the image. So already the image looks way better, uh, pops way more, and that tone curve is already a big part of it, right? Uh, now I'm going to adjust my general tone curve. Uh, what I tend to like to do is take my highlights and bring those down to kind of give a muted look to the image. I think that looks pretty good. Then I take my shadows and I bring them up. Yeah, so I think that looks pretty good. It gives a nice like faded look. And then if I need to, I can, you know, adjust certain parts of the midtone to get some contrast back within the image while still maintaining, you know, that muted look. So I think that looks, yeah, I think that looks pretty good there. So as you can see, the tone curve just did a lot. It just did a lot for my image. So before and after. So now, just by using only those panels, I have greatly affected my image. Uh, at this point, you could even call the image done if you want to, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys every single panel. So we're gonna keep going, and I'm gonna keep showing you how I adjust, right? After you've made these big general edits, because this is where you start getting specific, where you start getting more detailed with your image, right? We have an overall look established uh, with a lot of things that are going to affect my entire image. But, you know, now we want to start getting a little bit more specific. So I'm going to take the highlights down, right? You see that brings back some of the detail just at the edge of the sky. You know, the sky's blown out, so that's not coming back. But you can get back some of the details in the these bricks here so I'm gonna take that all the way down right and then you know I'm losing some of the detail in her hair the shadow on her face is a bit you know maybe a bit too much so I'm just gonna raise my shadows just a tad okay um, blacks and whites I'm not gonna mess with too much just because I already kind of adjusted those uh, with my tone curve but you know you could see you can do a little bit more muting here if you wanted to uh, you know, similar things to what you can do with the tone curve, uh, which I already did, so I'm not really going to mess with it too much, but it's another spot where you can make those adjustments. Uh, I also want to maybe take the contrast of my image, overall contrast, down just a tad, uh, and I think that looks pretty good. Now, in this present section, uh, a lot of people, you know, tend to not want to use clarity. And I'm one of those people when I'm doing portraits, it looks great on like a lot of landscapes and like buildings and stuff. But 
something that you can actually do if you want to emulate the look of a vintage lens or soften the skin a little bit is actually have a little bit less clarity. You could even have a little bit less dehaze because those vintage lenses tend to like haze and not be as sharp and not be as clear. Uh, so that's something you could do if you want to get creative. But in this case, I'm actually going to add some dehaze because I like how the dehaze looks, it makes it pop and look a little bit sharper. Uh, but I'll, you know, what? I'll leave some of that clarity out, you know, give it a little bit of bloom that tends to give some nice bloom in the highlights and stuff like that, make it look a little bit dreamy, you know, you know, just get a little bit creative. All this stuff uh, is really more so to taste, but you just want to know how to use it to create the effect that you want. So you can make the image look really like sharp and stark with more clarity. If I bump this up some people like that style or you know I could give it a little bit less uh, now vibrance and saturation are similar but you notice if you take the vibrance down versus taking uh, so let's reset this the saturation down taking the saturation down will actually desaturate all of your image whereas vibrance doesn't have uh, that same effect okay so if you wanted to make a black and white image you could just take your saturation all the way down uh, but you know as you can see that doesn't work with the vibrance uh, because they're affecting your pixels differently uh, so at this point I think we're good on the basics panel okay so again image looks pretty good but I want to you know make a little bit more of a specific edit so let's go into split toning uh, what split toning does is it allows you to add uh, any hue any specific hue to your highlights and shadows and then balance uh, that shadow hue and highlight hue uh, to your liking so in this case, I want to add a little bit of a, like a golden orange color to my highlights. So we'll pick, yeah, that looks, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It's pretty gold-ish. And then I'll pick a complementary color so that we have color contrast. That's a little bit teal. I think that looks pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'll try and balance those. Okay, I think that looks good. And then I decrease my intensity because I don't actually want it that intense. It you know can start looking tacky really quick. You just wanna uh, do that so you can really tell what's happening and then you know balance it as much as you need to and then you just bring the saturation down so that it's not affecting the image as much and you can see that just warms the image up a little bit while still keeping uh the shadows from getting too warm themselves okay so i think that looks pretty good we are good on the split toning now the next thing that i would tend to do is going to hsl now hsl uh a lot of people confuse it with the camera calibration we which we explained before right camera calibration uh works on every single pixel in the image all at once when you use hsl it's really going to be selective and targeted to only the color that you are choosing to adjust so you can see if i take my blues here and i turn them really teal skin didn't go crazy like it did when i did a similar thing in calibration okay so what you can also do that's different here is not just adjust the hue and saturation but the luminance of a specific color range. And this is useful for if you wanna do things like, let's say, uh, turn the sky more blue and darken it. I'll do a similar effect on this wall here. It's not gonna be exactly the same because it's not a sky, but the same principle applies, right? I can take this blue wall and just make it look a little bit more teal. You see? What I did there, it just looks a little bit more teal by just taking the hue and adjusting it a little bit. 
So I think, you know, that just makes it look a little bit more consistent with the background because when that golden light mixes with it in the background, it tends to look a little bit brighter than this front part. So just doing that makes it look a little bit more consistent. And you can see it affects all the blues. Like it affects this patch of blue on her shirt here as well. And since some of the shadows on her shirt are blue, uh, it's having an effect on the shirt. So. It's only affecting anything that's represented as blue, but by making this adjustment so that the blues look a little bit more teal, I can make this front part of the wall look a little bit more consistent with the back part of the wall so that you know this back part doesn't stand out more than this front part. So again, that's a really specific adjustment, so that's why I'd want to do that later on in the edit than, you know, calibration and so on and so forth. Now, I could also, you know, maybe take the saturation of those blues down a little bit and even the aquas. Uh that way the wall isn't like a huge focal point of the image. I want to keep some of it just because, you know, it looks really cool. It's a nice looking color, uh, you know, really calming, but I don't want it to kind of take over the image. And I can even drop the luminance on it a little bit so that it's not as bright. Uh, just really subtle because it's also affecting the shirt, so I don't want to go too crazy with it. Um, we're just going to take the luminance down a tad. So you can see what it's doing there. I made it more teal. And if I didn't make that luminance adjustment, you know, it would be teal and really bright. But just by darkening the luminance a little bit, I'm able to shift that color while not making it look so bright and then distracting because the focal point is really uh, the model and not the brick wall. You just want it to look consistent so you can see before and after what that does i think it's having a really cool effect definitely making the image look better but it's a really specific you know selective edit now the next thing i would move on to is the effects okay so now we're really just finishing our image off uh, the effect that I tend to use is just, you know, some grain, uh, just add some texture to the image. Uh, you can change the size and roughness to kind of suit what you want. I tend to like the size around default, actually, with like just a tad bit more roughness, you know, and a little bit more grain. It just adds a little bit of texture to the image. You can see, you know, if you want that, if you don't. Uh, and before and after on this image is looking really awesome. So the image pops so much, I'm able to see so much of the detail in the image. The colors look great. There's a lot of contrast. Like it just looks really, really good at this point. So I'm just gonna finish it off by looking at the details. Um, so noise reduction is useful if you had to boost your ISO, but in this case, I don't really need much noise reduction. But if you did have to like shoot in low light or something or like boost your ISO for whatever reason, you can use this to smooth your image out. But if you take it too far, it looks like bad face tune. Same thing with if you take, for example, your clarity down too far, uh, you know, it looks like really bad face tune. So you want to be careful with um, when you're adjusting, uh, you know, the clarity and uh, noise reduction because they can really make your image look too fake if you use them too much. Uh, but, you know, people sometimes we'll use these as like a hack to try and not retouch. I mean, you really should retouch if your image needs to be retouched, but you know, you can use these to kind of soften uh, the image a little bit, which sometimes you want, sometimes you don't. In this case, I really don't. Uh, you know, there's no noise. I don't need to reduce it. I don't need to use it as like any kind of a weird skin hack. I'll just leave it how it is. But again, if you did have a lot of grain and noise from using a high ISO, you totally want to, you know, use a little bit of noise reduction as needed. You know, just be gentle. Now, 
sharpening is something that I do tend to actually use, but you want to be careful with sharpening, right? You can't just start sharpening the image because, I mean, you could, you could technically do anything, uh, but that's going to just sharpen your whole overall image. What you want to do is you want to use the masking. And the way that you can see what that's actually doing is by hitting the Alt, I think it's Option on Mac, uh, and then you just click this slider and it'll actually show you what part of the image is going to be affected. That's what those white lines are. So this is good for me. I don't want the entire image to be sharpened, only like these parts of the image, like the glasses, the hair, a little bit of that shirt and the brick wall. And then by choosing an appropriate mask amount, you can really go crazy with your sharpening and it's not going to make your image look nuts. Uh, you'll be able to see it more like if you zoom in where the sharpening happens. So here, I don't know if you'll be able to tell that on YouTube actually, but you can tell when you zoom in, but when you zoom out, it just looks like, ooh, that's sharp. And then the parts that you need to look unsharp can stay looking unsharp, okay? So that's what you wanna be mindful of in this details panel. So at this point, I'm pretty much done, right? I've gone through all of these different panels. Uh, if you have any more questions, just ask me in the comments or you can hit me up on Instagram. Uh, you know, just let me know if you want me to go any more in depth on any of these particular things. Uh, I'll be happy to. Uh, but at this point, I'm ready to save this as a preset because my edit is pretty much done. You can see the before and after. I think that looks pretty good if I say so myself. If you think that looks good, give this video a thumbs up. And if you really, really like it, right, you can buy my presets right okay so let's actually save this so just in case you actually don't want to buy my presets you know how to make your own uh you hit this plus button hit create presets we're gonna call this um let's see let's just call it sunset as you can see like i've practiced this tutorial twice so that's what those are. Uh, and we're going to hit uh, check none. So I'll go through and explain to you all of the ones that I'm gonna check off and why or why not. So the auto settings, uh, I almost uh, never use that. Uh, just realized that says sunset, sunset. Okay, yeah, I pretty much never use that. It's useful sometimes if you're doing batch editing and you want like Lightroom to try and auto expose or whatever, but like when do I ever want to do that? So <laughs> I'm not going to check that off. Uh, I usually don't even use it. Uh, I'm also going to leave treatment and profile, white balance, and exposure unchecked. Uh, especially white balance and exposure, like I explained at the beginning, are specific to your image. You want to use that to correct for if you over or underexpose, if your white balance was off, but you don't need to save that to transfer over to every image because uh, your white balance might have been correct on the next shot. So if you take that white balance adjustment or exposure adjustment, over to another image that was actually correct, then it's gonna make that image look off. Uh, so you just don't even wanna transfer that stuff over. What you do wanna keep though, is the adjustments you made to things like contrast, highlights, shadows. I didn't actually do anything with the blacks and whites, but you know, if you did, you'd wanna save those. So I'm gonna save those for the sake of the preset. Uh, there's a lot of those things that we're gonna encounter where I might not have actually done anything, but I'll still save it. Um, I'm also going to save uh, the tone curve, of course. I'm gonna save texture, even though I didn't do anything with it, because if you did, you'd wanna save that. Uh, clarity, dehaze. Now sharpening, I tend not to save because that varies from image to image, like how uh, you want the masking to be adjusted. So I'm not gonna bother saving that. You can adjust that on an image by image basis. Uh, color, I am gonna keep. Uh, split toning, I'm gonna keep. Uh, now these graduated filters, uh, I didn't actually use graduated filters. Those are local adjustments. Uh, if you want me to get into those in another tutorial, leave a comment letting me know. Um, but those are just for doing like specific 
parts of the image. So for example, I could use a graduated filter to just darken only this part of the sky. But again, that's not something that you ever need to save into a preset because that's specific to this image, right? Not every image is gonna have a super bright overexposed sky here. So if I save that adjustment or an adjustment like that uh, to darken that in my preset, uh, and then I transfer that over to another image, it's just gonna make uh, the corner of that new image look dark and look weird, uh, and you don't want that. So things like graduated filters and radial filters, you're not gonna transfer over. Also noise reduction. Noise reduction, uh, I tend to think of like sharpening, right? Because you don't necessarily know uh, with every image if it will require noise reduction or not, so you don't need to save it to a preset. Uh, lens corrections also I'm not gonna save um, you know everyone can just do this uh, as it, it's required some people will be using lenses that have profiles some people will be adjusting manually some people may not adjust at all so you don't need to bother to save this to a preset uh, because you know it varies from lens to lens things like that uh, same thing with transformations because that's for you know adjusting maybe the leveling of the image but if you took that adjustment uh that you made to you know level a crooked image and then you put it on an image that was already leveled it's going to make the leveled image crooked so you don't want to save that into a preset i think you you know are getting the idea of what you want to save and what you don't want to save things that are image specific you don't want to save but things that are general uh and that will affect like a big part of the image and the overall look and colors and contrast and things like that you do want to save so I did add a little bit of grain so I'm just gonna check that I don't usually actually use the vignetting feature to add vignette uh, but you know if you did that's something you would also check I'm also gonna check off the calibration now this one is a toss-up like I explained earlier uh, I can save this part of the image uh you know the camera calibration i can save that adjustment because i didn't adjust my hues right all i did was adjust the saturation and so it's not going to look too crazy from camera to camera if i had adjusted uh, any of the hues in the calibration section i might not want to save it just because depending on you know what camera i'm using that might you know have a wild effect that i don't want and you know i've shot on a lot of different cameras sony panasonic and then if i'm making presets for other people to use i don't know what camera they're using so i don't want to save calibration if I'm adjusting the hue. If I'm just as adjusting the saturation, you know, you're kind of safe to actually uh, save that. But, you know, sometimes you might not even want to save that. It really just depends. Uh, but in this case, I'll save it. So now we have this sunset preset. Now, before I call this preset done, I just like to test it on several different things. Uh, that way I can make sure that it's gonna work for a wide variety of images. So first, uh, let's go to this image. Uh, same location, same day, very similar. So if I put that preset on there, I think that looks pretty good. All I'd have to do is adjust my exposure because that image is a little bit dark. And I think that looks pretty good before and after. And that's the glory of presets, right? Now that I've done that once, I only have to do it once, right? Uh, and if you get other people's presets, like perhaps mine, then instead of figuring out like all of the different adjustments, you can see how other people do their adjustments uh, and kind of just like steal their knowledge quickly instead of having to spend hours. Because I think uh, I've been going on this for... Well, I'm going to edit it down, but like literally I've been in Lightroom talking about this for over 30 minutes. Uh, so, you know, you could save yourself a lot of time by just getting presets. Uh, so let's now uh, try another image. This doesn't have as much teal in it. So let's see if it or blue or whatever. So let's see if this still looks good. I'm going to reset this because this actually has uh, an edit on it already. 
uh, and then we're gonna use sunset yeah and that looks pretty good doesn't ruin the image now if I wanted to make a change like you know maybe add some contrast back into the preset um, like that uh, to make it look better because I think it looked too washed out here I could do that and then right click and then update the preset so I'll hit uh, update with current settings all the same stuff is checked off and now it's a little bit more updated so now I can go back here see if it still looks good on this one yeah and it still looks good so you know just making sure that it looks good on a variety of places uh, now let's try this. This is a very different lighting scenario. This is a like, you know, a uh, kind of low key lighting, artificial light instead of natural light. It's not golden hour. Uh, so if I put that preset on again, okay, confirmed. It does not ruin the image. I just need to brighten a little bit more. And you know what? Like I think it makes the skin look a little bit too red, right? So let's see what could be causing that. Let's go into calibration um, and let's take, no, that, that's not it. Okay, let's see if it's the screen. No, okay, so let's look at the saturation and we're just gonna take the saturation of these oranges down just a tad. Actually, you know what I can do? I can take my overall saturation down just a little bit yeah and that actually looks pretty good to me um, this isn't necessarily the look I would go for for this type of image it's more of like an outdoor orange and teal like poppy look but you know it's just a little bit of a different thing now this is a completely different camera this was taken on a G9 so I want to check this and yeah see it makes the image pop in a similar way um, I'd want to, you know, just adjust my exposure a little bit. But yeah, I'm seeing that same issue where like maybe it's a little bit too saturated. So yeah, I'm definitely going to take my saturation down a little bit by like, let's say 10 and then update this preset. Um, update with current settings. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I can even say, hey, uh, I want to make this more extreme with the blues right here. Uh, this I'm not gonna save to the preset uh, just because, you know, that was just something particular I wanted to do for the jacket. But you can see by using a preset, I'm able to s like speed up my edits way more and the kind of general look between the images uh, is somewhat similar uh, so that, you know, if you wanted to have an Instagram feed be pretty consistent, using presets is good for that too. Now I can go on to this image. This is like a Sony image. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to apply this sunset preset. Okay. And you can see it also does not ruin my image. That's great. So I can adjust my exposure as needed. Uh, in this situation, you know, my greens are really distracting to me. So what I might want to do is come down to the green primaries and lower the saturation a little bit and you see it also affects the skin tones and I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm actually gonna take those develop settings. I'm gonna copy those uh, and I'm gonna go back to uh, let's say this image and I'll paste those develop settings to see if I like them settings and that looks pretty good so I I'm pretty safe to say hey I'll update the preset with these current settings update and now I have a preset that's gonna work on a variety of different images I could even take it on this completely different image with a completely different set of colors and it doesn't ruin the image it actually looks pretty good before and after and that's essentially what you want out of your presets you want it to be able to generally drop on to whatever and work pretty well and give you decent results you want to get consistent results so that you know your clients are getting uh, what they see on your feed and so that your feed is consistent all that stuff uh, and this is how you do it you do it with presets all right you made it through the tutorial okay give yourself a pat on the back for listening to me ramble uh, <laughs> now if you made it this far 
uh, go ahead and smash the like button, you know, if you learned a little bit about Lightroom. But if you also do want to support and get my presets, I'm actually going to give you a discount. Yes, a discount that makes the presets cost $1 per preset, okay? So that'll save you all the time in having to go through this process that you just saw to make all of your own presets. <laughs> uh, so if you wanna do that, uh, the code is going to be, we made it. Okay, uh, I'll say a little bit louder for the people in the back. The code is, we made it, okay? And then it's gonna get you a discount on my presets okay so thanks for watching subscribe give this video a like tell your friends about it if you learn something you know share it uh even if you don't buy my presets still share this video so that people know how to use lightroom okay i know it's a struggle i know the struggle well just share this help somebody out i hope this helped you and i'll see you in the next video